Podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV. North Carolina has enjoyed a rich history of stunning pottery with masterful craftsmanship. Heather Burgess reveals how a groundbreaking exhibit at Old Salem featuring 120 pieces of our state's pottery legacy tells the remarkable story of our state's first earthenware potters. The beauty, the artistry, and simple reflections of daily life and inspiration for 18th and 19th century potters in North Carolina are revealed in Art in Clay, an exhibit on display at Old Salem's Museum of Early Southern Decorative Arts. What we have done is re-examined the whole story of the history of earthenware production in North Carolina because for many generations people just assumed that the Moravians working in Salem were responsible for all of the slip decorated wares that were made in the 18th and early 19th century. And while they did contribute a tremendous amount of earthenware in that time period, there were other potters working as well. You'll find works from Old Salem's very first Moravian potter, Gottfried Ost, including his elaborate and complex piece used as a shop sign made in 1773. You'll also see earthenware full of whimsy and delight that highlights North Carolina's rich history of pottery. Pottery has been important to this state uh, for generations. Uh, the Moravians first settled in North Carolina in 1753 and had a potter here by 1755. And so the pottery tradition goes back a lot further than a lot of people realize. And the beauty and importance of the unique decorative motifs and designs leave both scholars and visitors alike left contemplating the inspiration behind the potter's wheel. One of the things that we see coming out of the shops that is really extraordinary is slip decorated ware, and that's ware that's decorated with liquid clay that uses motifs that are indicative of some of the Moravians' very strong religious beliefs. With the Moravians, we see primarily naturalistic decoration, flowers that have symbolic meaning as far as their faith is concerned. Anemones, for example, were thought to be associated with um, the crucifixion of Christ. And Lilies of the Valley, of course, makes you think of the Song of Solomon. The exhibit and research through articles in ceramics in America differentiates works once thought to be Moravian to non-Moravian pottery. Potters like the Albright and Loy families worked in the St. Asaph's district of Orange County, which is now part of Southern Alamance. You'll also find examples of Quaker influence. German potters who came from Pennsylvania settled in um, Orange County in the 1760s and created just a tremendous pottery tradition that, again, has very different motifs but also very striking motifs. The final group that we, that we really just touch on are the Quaker potters who were working in the Randleman area. Um, Hal and Eleanor Pugh are current potters who operate a pottery on the site of an 18th century potter, which is really very exciting. And they've, they've um, done some archaeology on that site and managed to help us attribute some slip decorated wares that were made by William and Thomas Dennis in the 18th century to that Quaker tradition as well. We've worked with a number of uh, working potters who have helped us to understand how these things were actually made. They have figured out how the slip decorating was done and how ring bottles were made and how press molded wares were made. I took the approach that they used clay to make the original model, but I do think that the, the forms and things might have something to do with maybe some kind of a confection mold or chocolate mold or something like that that doesn't survive today. That's just a guess on my part. But um, so this piece actually starts off on a wheel and gets thrown, um, sort of like a tall cylinder. By exploring how Moravians could have made their squirrel bottles or the art of slip decorating, potters like NC native Mary Farrell say it brings us closer to understanding the legacy of past potters. Earthenware from this time period has been so unknown, um, particularly the non-Moravian, and it was obvious for a while that a lot of the attributions weren't correct. You know, you could look at pieces and know the same person did not make these two pieces. The Art in Clay exhibit seems to unearth some of those age-old questions and brings a fresh view to North Carolina pottery, past, present, and future.
I also hope that they will take away an understanding that the pottery really helps us to understand the culture of the people who made it and what was going on in their minds when they made the pottery, both for the Moravians and other potters in North Carolina as well. Art in Clay, Masterworks of North Carolina Earthenware, will be on display at Old Salem's Museum of Early Southern Decorative Arts from now until August 14th. The museum is open Tuesday through Saturday, 9.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. and Sundays from 1 to 4.30. For more information, go to their website, oldsalem.org. Podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV.